Hello and welcome to The Drum. I'm Tim Palmer. Coming up today, Tony Abbott's cruel to be kind welfare plan. Would it work? Why an airline manager told top pilots to toughen up princesses? And how would Australian families feel about a two-child policy Chinese style? Our panel tonight, host of ABC Radio National Breakfast, Fran Kelly, author and blogger Anthony Lowenstein and Chaz Licciardello, the Cape Crusader from The Chaser. And at some stage, Chaz, you're going to have to explain yourself, I think. Sorry? <laughs> OK. <laughs> First, though, to Tony Abbott's plan to overhaul the welfare system. The opposition leader wants to make the work for the Dole scheme mandatory for people under 50 who've been unemployed for more than six months. He's also calling for non-permanent disability pensioners to get a job. Sometimes governments have to be firm to be fair. Allowing people to stay on welfare when there is work they can reasonably do is the kindness that kills. It's the misguided compassion that eventually breaks down the social fabric as the more perceptive Aboriginal leaders have long recognised. Well, welfare groups have already criticised the coalition plan and Prime Minister Julia Gillard has dismissed it as a twice reheated, uncosted spin. It's all about the politics, all about the focus groups, all about clutching for an old policy that isn't properly costed, isn't properly funded and trying to pretend to the Australian people it's a new idea. Well, Fran Kelly, this seems to be a bit of an extension from Tony Abbott, the idea that he's uh, run in the Northern Territory that sit-down money uh, is the curse of welfare. Uh, it's, it's, that came originally from his long relationship with Noel Pearson. Is it something that he can extend into the broader community? And why do it now? Well, it's not... I mean, Julia Gillard's right. This is not a new idea. It's not even a new idea for Tony Abbott. and goes back beyond his um, attention and focus on welfare payments to Aboriginal Australians. In, uh, in the Howard government, he and Jocelyn Newman put out a major welfare-to-work policy. I think it was costed around $5 billion. It was all about this very thing, trying to get down our long-term unemployed numbers and the number of, of Australians on disability pensions. It costs money, and they invested money, and that was a good thing. Did it work? It doesn't look like it worked. We still have 800,000 people on the disability pension today, and I think similar numbers on long-term uh, classes, long-term unemployed. And some people say close to 2 million Australians who are not even seeking work in the workforce, even though they feel underemployed and would like to do more work. This is a major problem. These ideas have been tried before. I think Are it's... there no new tactics in this? Uh, What's well, tactics? I'm sure there's tactics. I'm sure some of what Julia Gillard says, I mean, you would expect her to say that too. Of course, it's a bit like a state government having a law and order policy. A federal opposition has a welfare. Let's get tough on welfare. Sure. So does the government. Not many political tactics, though. Is there nothing new in terms of enforcement and regulation of welfare? I can't see anything new. I mean, many, many years ago, Simon Crean, when uh, the Keating government had Working Nation, the new idea there was this notion of, of case workers and really investing to give uh, long-term unemployed people one-on-one and support to help get them workforce. I mean, that's what is taken is going to need to be taken for some of these people on disability and long-term benefits to have people really investing in them. A lot of these people aren't up to it, and that is the truth of it. And we'd be much better off spending money to more on training, appropriate training, not just a job placement agency telling you how to write your CV or something, and ideas like trying to give incentives to employers to stick with some of these people, to invest in them, because some of these people aren't the most attractive options for employees, for employers. Let's face it. I mean, Tony Abbott says we shouldn't, you know, we're killing people with kindness. Well, you know, this, the um, unemployment new start allowance at the moment, we're going to starve them to death if we don't start putting that up soon. So I think, you know, these are the same old answers. And and they don't work. Chaz, the, the dole bludger as the, a political staple to be whipped every now and then, but the, the dole bludger's been off the political radar for a while. Is this the kind of issue where the community follows, someone like Tony Abbott putting it back on the agenda, or do you think that the opposition will have a hard time getting people to care about this when we've got pretty low unemployment levels? Look, I think the fact that he brought it up suggests that he thinks that people will go for it. Certainly, at least his audience will go for it. Um, whether it works, however, is another thing altogether. I, I'd just like to just add to what Fran was saying before, that... This is not just not new in Australia, but it's not even new elsewhere. Like in America, for instance, a lot of their welfare, their, their unemployment benefits run out between three months and two years after you become unemployed. So they, they've done lots of studies on what happens when you cut off unemployment benefits. You know what happens? People stop looking for jobs. They actually stop. And the reason why is because it, 
basically when you're unemployed, your esteem is low, your confidence is down, and if you and, and the longer you are unemployed, the more your skills degrade, the more unattractive you become as a candidate, and you end up losing hope. Tony Abbott's argument against Tony Abbott's argument against that though is the dignity of labour argument exactly against that self-esteem problem that you, that you force people where there are vacancies regardless of whether they're the vacancies that those long-term unemployed would choose to fill, you force them to take some work anyway. I completely agree with the dignity of work, and I think that it's a great idea to get people involved in jobs, and that's actually for the reason I'm a little bit unstereotypical in my... Uh, in, in other ways, apart from the cape, <laughs> the, uh, in, as far as a lefty goes, because I actually like work for the doll, if it's administered properly which is I don't think you get people to pick up litter because that's essentially detention. I think what you do is you, if you create vacancies for people that are, say, working in a volunteer agency or something like that, something which improves your confidence, improves your esteem, might, maybe, maybe improves your skills, mm. then I think it makes you more, more confident, more likely to get a job and a more, a more attractive candidate. And but it, I'm not sure this is it. And beyond the enforcement and trying to toughen up the, the actual qualification requirements, for those who do qualify, uh, this idea spelled out again of quarantining, extending the quarantining of welfare, 50% yep. of money uh, across the board. Uh, do, you th do you think that's going to be acceptable to the Australian community? People have, have seemed to have accepted it in Indigenous communities in the Northern Territory. It's been running for some time now. Do you think it's, it's palatable for the Well, I'd actually argue that it's maybe palatable in the Northern Territory in white communities, but the truth is that if you speak to basically any Aboriginal leader, aside from Marsha Langton, Noel Pearce and one or two others, the Northern Territory intervention on most standards has been an utter disaster. The idea that most standards are going to be coming down. The elephant in the room to me, this policy, is that Tony Abbott and Gillard as well, for that matter, looks at the Northern Territory and see it's not a success, but certainly we're moving in the right direction. In fact, it's going in the wrong direction entirely. It's not just what I think. It's a lot of Aboriginal leaders are saying constantly about what's happening up there. To try and extend that to Alice Springs, which is what Tony Abbott has talked about doing, um, is the wrong way to go. And I think that one of the thinking behind this kind of policy announcement today, apart from the fact it's Reaganomics on crack, we're putting that aside, it also seems to be this belief somehow that we in white communities know what other people who are less fortunate don't know. And second, and finally, the gap between rich and poor in Australia has never been worse, getting wider and wider. The idea somehow of targeting individuals who are obviously poor, on the dole, have issues, no question about that, rather than looking at ways, if you want to raise revenue quicker, in my view, raise tax. Not very popular electorally, I'll give you that. But that to me is the, is the best way to do it, because frankly it's the most logical way to actually deal with inequalities in society. Uh, on the quarantining, uh, just leaving the morals aside, because I have no morals, just talking about the logistics, <laughs> uh, the, the, I think there's two essential problems with it. First of which is if you quarantine, say, 120 bucks a week out of someone's unemployment benefits and say that has to go to food, even if they're wasting their money, let's just say they are wasting their money, then they'll just spend the 120 bucks that they're not wasting on the quarantine and the rest they'll waste. You're not actually going to stop them in commas wasting their money because no one spends less than 120 bucks a week on food and essentials. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, once again, I hate to keep on going back to America, but I know more about America than Australia. <laughs> in America with food stamps, what people do is they just sell them. And that's exactly the same situation. You sell them for slightly less than they're worth and you just take the cash. Has there been oh. evidence of that, friend, you know, in the Northern Territory of trade, tr people trading for mm. what they really want I to I haven't eat? seen evidence of that and I'm not, I'm not across it enough to know exactly how they do cash in, if you like, their other half for food and, and, and clothing. And there are mixed views on it. And, I mean, I think the problem with it in the Northern Territory and uh, if you're trying to institute it across the nation is you can't do something like this holeless bolus. It's a deprivation of civil rights and liberties. I mean, sure, there are some people, you will find people in some Indigenous communities who say it's helped them, it has meant that there has been